So I have an application up and running here, and we can see that in Safari. And right now as it is, anytime I want to do some command line stuff within my container, like run a PHP artisan command or a composer command, I have to type in a bunch of stuff. So I can have to do something like docker compose exec or docker compose run. And for instance, we can do docker compose exec, something against our app container. And then we run into the weird thing where sometimes I have to pass in a command um, like this, like shell dash the or bash dash the to type in multiple commands. So I can do something like var html and then the command I actually want, like php artisan list to get uh, a list of available artisan commands. All of that is kind of a pain. So what I like to do in development is to create a helper script to make the workflow stuff a lot easier. To so make commands like PHP artisan, whatever, or composer, anything, or if I want to use yarn from my node container or NPM or Node.js, of course, I like to make shortcuts for that so that development is a lot easier. So I don't have to write all these insanely long commands just to do something as simple as PHP artisan list or yarn run watch or whatever I want to run. So let's see how we can do that. The first thing I'm going to do is actually change this a little bit. So normally I would create a script called do or develop, or if you've seen my vessel application, I have a command named vessel, uh, which is something you can see at vessel.shippingdocker.com, which is basically this workflow, only a little bit more powerful for Laravel applications specifically. So I typically create a bash script here that we can use, but I usually like to make that in my application directory so that I can just run commands from here when I'm in my code. So if I do docker compose ps, that actually does work because it searches for the nearest docker compose file. So it can actually see a docker compose file one level up from where I just typed in this command. So I could actually go ahead and run a script from here. Uh, but what I like to do is a little bit different here. I'm actually going to move any uh, stuff that starts with Docker. So my Docker Compose YAML and my Docker directory, I'm going to move that into my application directory. So before I do that, I'm going to do Docker Compose down so that nothing is running here. And while that was happening, I remembered that all my stuff is named this namespace PHP app. So I'm actually going to do the complete inverse. I'm going to go into my application and I'm going to move everything inside of this directory one level up. And let's see if anything remains. Uh, yep. So move dot star. Well, let's see. Everything that begins with a dot, I'm going to move one level up as well. Okay, nothing's in there anymore. I'm app one level. All my application stuff is here, including still, of course, my Docker directory, my Docker compose, and all that good stuff. So I'll remove dash rf the application directory that's empty. And now my application and everything is in this directory. Um, so I do need to adjust some stuff here. My shared directory is here. I want to share the current directory now into var html because the current directory has the entire application in it now. And let's see, I have that here as well for the node container. So we'll do the same thing, share the current directory into opt into the opt directory for node. And I think that's the only file paths we have here. Perfect. So let's go ahead and see if I broke anything when I do docker compose up dash D. See, it's still named PHP app. It didn't have to rename the containers or the network or any of that good stuff. So we didn't have to recreate any of that. Um, specifically, I was worried about Docker volumes because I think it would try to create new volumes and lose our data. And that is singular. Yeah, so these are namespaced by the directory as well. So I didn't want any of that stuff to change. Okay, so now we have our directory and our Docker stuff all in one place here, all in one directory in the same directory level. And that's really what I like to do. Um, let's see, my .m file did get overwritten. So what I want to do here is go to the bottom and just add my app port equals 80 and my db port equals 33060, just like it was set before. Okay, now let's see. I think this will still work, right? Yeah, all right, so port 80 was the default. So I'll just restart my Docker containers here and it should grab those new ports as well. So that's still port 80, it's working there. And then if I open SQL Pro, we should see if I set 33060 as the port there, it's able to connect and it is. All right, so that is all still working. So the first thing we need to do here to, to develop a workflow is create a script. And I use bash for this. And in this case, I'm just gonna call it develop. And I like to call it develop just because it's usually something I do in development, but you can name it whatever you want. It totally does not matter. So we'll tell it to use bash for the currently uh, running environment. And I'm not gonna do anything in here yet. I'm just gonna save and quit it. And then I'll do ch mod plus x develop to make it executable. It's right here in my terminal. That's how you know it's executable. And that lets me just do develop like this. So I don't have to say bash develop specifically. This is a much easier uh, keystroke to do. And if you have tab completion, it'll complete it 
easily as well. So the script, of course, does nothing. So in the next video, we're going to build up the script a little bit and have it do some very useful stuff for us. We're going to build off our commonly run commands like artisan, composer, and stuff we might do in our node container to make it really easy to run common tasks within our Docker containers.